I'm Sabra. Hello, Sabra. Um, this is maybe a kind of a trivial question, but it's something that, um, that I think about a lot. Uh, it's, not, it's not hard for me to understand how there could be no matter in reality, and it's not hard for me to understand how there could be you know, three-dimensional space. But time is something that I just can't get my head around. And uh, I think it's, it's easier for me to, if I have some intellectual way of understanding it, it's easier for me to proceed. I don't know. Um, Okay, well, I'm going to give you an, an intellectual response and an, an experiential response okay. in the hope that both of them together will. So the intellectual response, when you have a dream at night, you dream that you take a, a trip across, a, a road trip across the States and it takes you three weeks to drive. Yeah. And that seems very, the time that the road trip takes seems very real from the point of view of the person taking the trip in the dream. When you wake up, you realize that the dream didn't take any time in your own mind. It just happened like that. Well, it took some time, didn't it? I mean, it took you as long as it takes to think of all the things that happened. No, but when you wake up, you, you, you look at your clock before you go to sleep. It's two minutes to midnight. You fall asleep. You dream that you spent three weeks driving across America. You wake up, you look at your clock, and now it's one minute to midnight. Okay. It, it, the, the three weeks in the dream state doesn't take up any time in the waking state. So what I would suggest is that the three weeks in the waking state, so we've gone up from the dream state up to the waking state. What takes three weeks in the, in the dream state doesn't take any time in the waking state. And what I would suggest is what takes three weeks in the waking state doesn't take any time in consciousness. What about memories? I mean, isn't it, I don't know, it seems very true to me that things happened in the okay, past. Okay, let, let's go to the experiential answer yeah. okay. now. Would you agree that you are experiencing what we call now? Yes. Okay. Just, and would you agree that the now is not the past or the future, it's, it's now? Yes. Okay, now, try to step out of the now for a moment and actually experience the past. I know you can think about but we, we know that we can think about things that are not what they seem to be. So thinking about the past is obviously not evidence of the past. To find evidence of the past, we have to go there and experience it. Experience must be the test of reality. So now. What if we ask other people who were there? No, no, no. It's other people's evidence is not... Is not um, it's not certain evidence. You've got to find your own evidence. Nobody else is going to convince you about whether time exists or not, other than yourself. So tr try the experiment now. Just try to leave the now for a moment and visit the past. Have you ever experienced the past? My memory is no, not No, the question was, have you ever experienced the past? Not, have you ever thought about the past? Have you ever actually left the now and experienced the past? No. Has anybody ever experienced the past? No. Or the future? So, so that 
the past and the future is, has never been experienced by anybody, ever, nor could it ever be experienced. So, in other words, time is never experienced because time involves the. In order to define time, you, you you have to use the idea of time. Time involves the time is the duration between two events, which is like saying time is the time between two events. It's not a, a satisfactory definition, but it's not possible to get a satisfactory definition of time. Why? Because it doesn't really exist. It's a model of our experience that accounts, for instance, for what we call memory. But it's just a model. It's a valid model, a necessary model, but not a model that, that reflects the, the nature of reality. If you didn't refer to memory, let's say you were now just to experience the now, but without referring to memory, which is another way of saying without referring to thought, would you have any... We've, al we've already established you don't have any experience of time, but without reference to thought, would you even have any knowledge of time? No. So could it be that your knowledge of time is connected to the activity of thought, given that you only have knowledge of time when you're thinking? So are you sure that the time you think about is independent of thought, or could it be created by thought, given that it is only present or apparently present when thought is present? In other words, are you sure that we think about time because it exists, rather than considering the possibility that time exists, or rather seems to exist, only because we think about it. <coughs> okay. Because that is actually consistent with your experience. Your experience, first of all, says, I have no, non no experience of the past. Nobody has ever or could ever experience the past. It's something that's just out of our experience. So there's no empirical evidence for it. And then the second observation is that our knowledge of time is correlated with thought. Normally we think the arrow of causation goes from time to thought. Time is responsible for our thought about time. Could it be the other way around? Could it be that thinking is re responsible for the appearance of time? It is actually consistent with our experience. That's what our experience tells us. When you stop thinking, there's no experience of time. Okay, so it's all just a story. Pardon? It's all just a story. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't draw conclusions so so quickly. Just. just just ponder the, these. I've showed you two things about your own experience that are undeniably true. One, you have no experience of time. Two, your knowledge of time is correlated with thought. And that the presumption that time causes thought is a presumption that cannot be substantiated in experience. It is our experience that the, actually the arrow of causation goes the other way, thinking creates the appearance of time. So just consider deeply those two facts. They're, they're, they're facts of experience. Okay. Just just consider them and, <clears throat> and don't draw conclusions. Don't, I'm, I don't want to just, I'm not trying to convince you that time doesn't exist. I'm trying to first of all show you two facts of experience that you may not have been aware of, uh, which suggest that time is not what we think it is. And then to, to encourage you to to ponder your experience of time, the past and the future, with reference to these two facts of your experience. And, and just be open as you ponder it. See where this consideration takes you and don't draw conclusions too, too soon. Be, and you be open, you, you already are open. Otherwise you wouldn't have 
ask the question, but don't be too quick to say memory is evidence of the past. Okay. Okay. There are other possible interpretations of memory, but I think that's that's enough to. Okay. to Thank you.